Today we're going to be drawing with Photoshop to create a background for this animation which I created using the Adobe Animate program. So um, with an Adobe Animate program, the, uh, the HTML5 canvas is 550 pixels by 400 pixels. So we're going to keep the same ra aspect ratio and create a canvas that's twice as large. That way when we reduce it um, to the background of the Adobe Animate document, it will keep the same aspect ratio and we won't uh, distort the image. So we're going to do 1100 by 800 pixels and we're doing 300 pixels per inch so it's going to be a very high res image. The layer window should be on the right. If it isn't, click window at the top and make sure it's checked. You're going to create a new layer and you want to be drawing in that layer and not in the background. Um, you can see which layer is selected by just looking on the right. Um, there should be a layer menu on the right. If you select the brush tool and then click on a spot and then hold down the shift key and then click on another spot, you will get straight lines. Um, and then if you just use the brush tool normally, you'll get you'll be able to make a free draw on lines. Uh, I used a Wacom tablet here, but for shapes this simple, it should be pretty easy to just use the mouse. To enlarge the screen, you're going to click on the magnifying glass. Um, and when you want to make the screen small again, you just click Alt and the magnifying glass again, and you'll reverse that, make everything smaller. So you can really zoom in on the detail, draw and erase things in the background. Um, if you want a specific spot on the paper, you just click on the little hand above the magnifying glass and you can pull the paper to the position you want. Um, very useful for getting in the background details. To add color, you're going to use the magic wand tool to select an area. And if you look on the left, there's two boxes. The box on front is the foreground color. The box in the, box in the back is the background color. So right now I'm changing the foreground color. Then I'm going to hit Edit, Fill, and I'm going to fill in the area I selected with the wand with that color. Then I deselect, select a different area, and I can change the color, and I can color different areas exactly what I want. As long as your shapes are enclosed with the lines you drew, the Magic Wand tool will just select those areas. When you want to tweak a color, like you have it almost right, but you want it just a little brighter, a little darker, a little duller, um, you go to Image, and then you go to Adjustments, and there's all sorts of things you can do to the color, which you can play around with. Um, this is what I'm using now is called Curves, and it can really make very fine adjustments on your color. Um, you know, lighter, darker, more intense, duller. Um, so now I'm just selecting and deselecting different areas and coloring them in at this point. So I've sped up the video quite a bit to rush through this process because I'm just repeating the same thing I just did. Um, but basically, once you have the colors in, if they're not quite right, rather than selecting a different color, it sometimes pays to go up to the top where it says image, adjust, you'll get a drop down menu and you can pick all sorts of adjustments and play around with them. You can play around with the opacity, play around with the brightness. So that's that's basically what I'm doing here. It's, it's a great time to experiment and learn about the different capabilities. If you want to select multiple areas with the um, you know, with the magic wand and fill them all in with the same color. Um, if you just hit the the shift key, it'll allow you to select more than one area at a time. So you hold the shift key down, click the magic wand in several different places. So at this point, I've pretty much filled in the colors I want. And now what I'm doing is I'm hitting the... Um, I duplicated the layer and I hit the um, trans see how I have a copy of the layer so now I hit the transform key and I hit scale and I made the the layer smaller and what I did was I hid the layer in front of it so I could see what I was doing 
and then I duplicated the layer again and I did um, transform and then flip horizontal and then I moved the layer over. If you use the crosshairs, um, it's the top tool in the toolbar on the left. The crosshairs will allow you to take um, what, you're, what you're working on and move it over. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm actually taking the, a layer and I'm moving it up. Um, you just have to make sure that you select the uh, the layer. Um, what you do is you, you click on the layer menu on the right to make sure you're in the correct layer that you want to be in. And then you hit select all. And then you go to that little crosshairs on the left and you can move your layer around. Um, another thing to do is go to... Um, a layer that you want to change the size of or alter in any way and you hit, you click on the layer you hit select all and then you um, and then you hit transform and then scale or try other transformation tools and you can change the size and um, do all sorts of fun things transforming the layer right now I'm working on the background so um, I'm mean, using the what's called the gradient tool. It's it's in the toolbar. If you can't find it, you can always um, you know search for it. do a search for it or uh, you just look at the bottom of the toolbar right above the the color selection. Um, there's usually three dots there. If you just click on that the bottom corner of that, it'll come up with all the tools that are not visible, and you find uh, the gradient tool. And what I did was I changed the background and foreground color um, to the, the edges of the gradient. So I picked blue and white. And then I played around in the background. I selected the background layer and played around with the gradient until I got a background color that I wanted. And if you notice, I also go back and forth hiding different layers so I can see what I'm doing. Um, to the left of the layer menu, there are these little eyes. And if you click on one of those eyes, it'll hide a layer. So you can, if you're working on a lower layer, you could see what's going on. Um, but basically, all I did was transform to change the size of various things. And I used the, the move tool to move various things. And I took layers and duplicated them. And right now, I'm just using the transform tool to distort a layer that's the, the nice thing about this city it's kind of funky weird shapes so when you distort it it doesn't look wrong um, but here I'm adding a brand new layer so I hid all the other layers and I'm just working on the very top layer and I'm adding a new building and uh, all the other layers are temporarily hidden so I could see what I'm doing Now I'm putting one of the layers back in so I could see how it looks uh, with the overlapping. And then I'm selecting areas and I'm, I'm f filling them up with color and then I'm adjusting the color. And there, there's a lot of um, playing around with things till they look right. You have to have the sort of the, the artist's eye to see what you like. Uh, generally I tend to put the brighter colors in the foreground and I tend to desaturate the color and make it like it's fading off in the distance in the background colors. Um, you don't want the colors to be too transparent in the foreground because if they are it'll be like looking through tissue paper at the background layers. Um, if it's if it's not opaque then it sort of ruins the 3D effect because you can see the background layers through the buildings. So you want to keep the front layers opaque and the back layers transparent. Um, and the, if you have the back layers a little bit transparent, it'll give that nice atmospheric look like it's fading off into the distance, like you're looking at a real landscape. Right now I'm just selecting various areas, picking colors. I've hit all, I mean, sorry, shift and pick more than one area with the magic wand and now there's you can tell which areas are selected because you get that uh that dotted line surrounding the areas that shows you what's selected with the magic wand tool 
So brighter colors in the foreground, desaturated colors the farther back you go, um, changing the vibrance, the saturation, and just adjusting things till they look right to me. Again, I'm hitting the transform tool and the scale, and this larger building was in front of the other building, and I, I changed the, oh, that's the other thing you can do. You can change the order of the layers. So if you take a layer on the right, the layer menu, and you grab it, and you pull it down, it'll go lower in the stack, and it'll, instead of being in the foreground, it'll be in the background. So you can change the order of the layers, um, to put smaller things in the back or overlap things the way you want. You can also hide layers um, in the in the final um, in the final picture. So I decided ultimately when I did the finished animation that I didn't like the buildings in the foreground and I just kept the buildings in the middle ground and background. The the bright buildings in the foreground were ultimately too distracting for my animation. So, almost done wrapping it up here. Here's my final picture. Um, you can see all the different layers. And this is what I ended up using in the animation, just the middle and background, and I added a sidewalk in in the front for good measure. And here's the finished animation with the guys battling on the street.